This is a spoiler-free recap of Unsold, the first book in the Cradle series by Will White. Weishi Linden begins his journey in his homeland, called Sacred Valley. Sacred Valley is where the most honorable sacred artists in all of Cradle reside, where the highest rank is Jade and Gold is only a legend, and where sacred artists only master a single technique. As a young seven-year-old of the Honorable Wei Clan, Linden learns he was born with a weak core, and is labeled empty or unsold. Members of the Wei Clan follow the path of the White Fox, which is a path composed of light and dreams. Having been forbidden from following that path, Linden spends the next eight years adapting to his weakness by seizing every advantage he can and developing his unique sense of honor by any means. Linden, now 15 years old, learns he can consume the fruit of an ancestral orris tree to help cure his moderate deficiency. While doing so, he interrupts a young copper clansman, Waymon Terrace, illegally hunting a white fox. In a twisted series of events, Linden ends up with a broken arm, only receiving half the Aura's fruit, getting berated for being weak by the first elder of the Wei clan, and being forced to schedule a duel with Terrace's younger and much more violent ten-year-old sister, who's at the foundation stage. Linden then meets up with the founder of the Path of the White Fox, a sacred beast named Elder Whisper, who tells Linden, When a traveler cannot find a path, sometimes he must make his own. Inspired by this advice, Linden searches the clan archives for anything that would be useful to an unsold. Within the archives, Linden finds the heart of Twin Star's cycling technique that prepares a sacred artist to split their core. He also finds a vague description of the empty palm technique that uses pure madra to temporarily disrupt an opponent's core and develops it into a usable technique with the help of his sister, Kelsa. Linden decides he'd rather not beat up a ten-year-old, or more likely get beaten up by her, Instead, he decides it'd be better to challenge the Mon Patriarch, an iron, to a duel. Linden successfully uses the empty palm and cheats his way through the rest of the duel. A few weeks later, Linden participates in the seven-year festival, where he uses the empty palm to happily win the Foundation Stage Tournament, by throwing around a bunch of children half his age and height. An enemy clan disrupts the seven-year festival by summoning one of their purportedly gold-ranked ancestors, Lee Marcuth, who then kills all the irons and jades and cuts Linden in half. Linden dies, mostly, but then the world freezes, Lee Marcuth is imprisoned, and everyone is brought back to life by Suriel, a celestial visitor from a planet beyond Cradle. Suriel is looking for her lost friend Osriel, who grew up on Cradle. Suriel shows Linden his most likely fate, in which he happily lives for several decades before dying after being stepped on by a massive creature walking through the hills surrounding Sacred Valley. Linden obviously asks if there's a way to stop this fate from happening. Suriel shows Linden some of the most powerful people on Cradle, Shah Miara, Northstrider, and the Eight Men Empire, who are strong enough to save his home, the level of power he must reach to stop the fated calamity. There are a million paths in this world, Linden, but any sage will tell you they can all be reduced to one. Improve yourself. Suriel tells Linden to leave Sacred Valley, where gold is only a myth, and she shows him a vision of Yaren battling to escape disciples of a local sacred arts school, Heaven's Glory. Suriel says that Yeren also has a fate that needs changing, and that together they can escape the valley. Suriel takes Lee Marcuth and disappears. Back in the Seven Year Festival, time unfreezes, and now much more motivated Linden cheats his way into earning a position as a student at Heaven's Glory School, much to the dismay of Elder Whitehall, a jade representative of the Heaven's Glory School who tried to give himself eternal youth and who is now forever stuck with the body of a child. Linden grabs his pack travels to Heaven's Glory School, and cheats his way through the school's entrance trial, called the Path of Glorious Ascension, and in the process offends the honor of an iron named Kazan Ma Durette, who was a slower trial taker than Linden. Durette proceeds to attack Linden, who defends himself against the dog from the Kazan clan, with his prize from the Lesser Treasure Hall, some formation banners of the Path of the White Fox. Linden wakes up early the next morning to get spirit fruit and elixirs as a reward for joining the school. In what has to be one of the most painful moments of the series for me, Linden walks calmly back to his room, instead of quickly scarfing them down like the spiritually destitute and desperate person that he is. Right in front of his room, Linden gets ambushed by Durette, who beats up Linden and takes away his spirit fruit and elixirs. Linden then gets helped to the Hall of Healing, and while recovering, he learns of Yaren's whereabouts by those she injured. Linden treks out onto Mount Samara, the mountain on which Heaven's Glory resides, and finds Yaren. Linden calls her by name, tells her a heavenly messenger told Linden about Yaren, and they make a soul oath to be together forever. I mean, to travel together out of Sacred Valley. Quickly thereafter, Elder Whitehall leads a group of irons, including Ma Durette, to capture Yaren. Durette sees Linden with the enemy, 
and excitedly tries to kill Linden. Linden once again uses his formation banners to confuse and then kill Durette. Yaren uses her striker technique, the Rippling Sword, to kill the rest of the Irons and force Elder Whitehall to run away. Linden wants to leave Sacred Valley immediately, but learns that Yaren is stuck because the Jades of Heaven's Glory decided they wanted a bunch of fancy stuff and killed her master, the Sword Sage. What? How did a bunch of Jades kill a Sage? <gasps> pop, 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 pop. Yaren is a Jade, and in order to advance to gold, she needs to bind the remnant of her master to herself. To prepare herself for this, she needs to rest and acquire spirit seals to assist her in binding the remnant. Against Linden's wishes, they return to Heaven's Glory for a night of rest before a heist in the morning. Within the Lesser Treasure Hall, Yaren uses her ruler technique, the Endless Sword, to delay the security constructs and an Elder of Heaven's Glory while Linden steals a Thousand Mile Cloud for a quick getaway, a Parasite Ring, one of the only ways to consistently strengthen Pure Madra, a Star Lotus Bud, a rare and powerful fruit that can instantly bring Linden to copper, a Sylvan River Seed, a natural spirit of Pure Madra that is little and blue, a knife for stabbing, and spirit seals for assistance in binding the sage's remnant. Linden and Yaren use a thousand mile cloud to escape from their heist and fly to the ancestor's tomb, an entrance to some sort of labyrinth. An intense battle occurs where Yaren uses her enforcer technique, the flowing sword, to battle her master's remnant while Elder Whitehall takes pot shots at the both of them. Linden attacks Elder Whitehall with the empty palm and nothing happens. Elder Whitehall then throws Linden over the battle between Yaren and her master, and Linden uses his chance to drop all the spirit seals on top of the remnant. Elder Whitehall follows Linden and uses a perverted version of the empty palm to try and destroy Linden's core permanently. Linden uses the Heart of Twin Stars to split his core, and Elder Whitehall misses. The battle concludes with Linden using the child-throwing technique he developed at the Seven Year Festival to throw Elder Whitehall off of a cliff, and Yaren absorbing her master's remnant to become a gold. Yaren quickly grabs her master's sword, and Linden and Yaren finally escape Sacred Valley using the Thousand Mile Cloud. While escaping, Linden eats the Star Lotus Bud, and Yaren reveals to Linden that Sacred Valley is full of lies. Yaren doesn't just use one technique, she uses all four. Linden isn't unsold, there's no such thing. He was just born a little weaker than normal, and that can be fixed with spirit fruits. In fact, Linden is already a sacred artist on a path since now he knows a spirit enforcer technique and a short-range striker technique. He's on the path of twin stars. The epilogue gives another glimpse of Suriel the Phoenix, who meets with Gadriel the Titan of the Abaddon. Suriel officially accepts the task of locating Osriel, and volunteers to save the survivors of a world falling into the void due to the absence of Osriel. The artwork used in the video was created by these wonderful artists. Links to their content can be found in the description below. The next video will be a spoiler-free recap of Soulsmith, the second book in the Cradle series by Will White, and apologies, but this one shamelessly requests that you like and subscribe to this one's channel. Gratitude.